Hello, everybody. I'm out here today on a beautiful day. Uh, I don't know. Sometime. I don't even know what day it is anymore. I I drive truck for a living in the bush and uh, up here in Ontario, Canada. We have spring thaw from usually the first to the middle of March to the middle to the end of May. And um, my logging season is, is pretty well wrapped up for now. So what I usually do at this time of the year is head out and cut up next winter's firewood. So that's what I'm at today. I'm just finishing up. This type of wood that I'm cutting here is what we call ironwood. It's a very hard wood, a uh, very dense wood. It's, it's up there with oak for as far, I think, as BTUs for burning. But it doesn't get real, real big. But this stuff here actually is <laughs> some of the bigger stuff you'll ever find. I've been hauling a lot of it you know, uh, for the last few years. It gets mixed in with our hardwood loads. But this here, I'll, uh, I'll be right back. I'll go to my Backsaver 2000. Get a measure tape. This stuff here, it's, uh, yeah, 10 inches, 10 and 12. I have my saw on here. That's uh, a foot. Yeah, so it's big stuff, but it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't have any what they call merchantable value other than firewood. Uh, this stuff here, with these growth rings, it's probably a hundred and some years old. Um, they don't get very big. And they do take a lot of nourishment out of the good trees. So we try to cut as many of them as we can appropriately throughout the hardwood bush. Uh, here's a perfect example of a, of a maple bush. A really good hard maple, sugar maple ground here. So we take, we take the off species out whenever we can. Um, if you can see some of these blocks, they're already starting to rot a little bit in the middle because that's basically all they are is, is fertilizer for the forest so you have to leave a little bit that's what makes your uh, good topsoil in the, in the forest and gives the other trees a chance to grow and as you can see probably behind me there's a few poplar and basically that's what their life is all about they uh they're a very fast growing tree those are um, they die very fast but usually after you cut a bush you'll see a bunch of those come up and then your your good trees, your your more dominant trees will will take over after a while. Your big oak and your maple around here, at least that's the way it is around here, anyway. So uh, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna throw some gas and oil in this. Still old forty six. I bought I bought this. Uh, I think I was eighteen or nineteen. Maybe I was nineteen years old. Uh, so that's over 20 years ago, and uh, this is a still 046 Magnum Arctic, and uh, I, I, I love this little saw. I do have a, uh, I do have a 500i. It's been a fantastic saw so far. I don't have a whole pile of miles on it yet, but uh, this girl right here has been really 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 good it uh i know you can't get them anymore my son just bought a 461 which i guess is the one that took over for this and uh we haven't had any time with it yet but uh i do like the still stuff these pro saws have been tried tested and true really 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 dependable so they are. I uh, just love them. It's too bad that they're getting away from gas because this has got quite a bit of torque in it yet. And 
you see a lot of stuff going to battery. I uh, I have some smaller battery stuff. I keep in my truck just in case I uh, need to cut a limb off or something like that. You don't want the gaps in the truck. But when I'm out here cutting wood and stuff, I like to be able to put the old two-stroke mix and oil and gasoline together and make some sawdust. So as you can see, I got the Kubota B2601 right beside me here. I run out of gas halfway through cutting. And uh, it's been absolutely amazing. The, the, this wood is heavy. Like it's, it's up there, I would say, per cubic meter or cubic foot, it would have to be up there with an oak because it's so dense. And uh, there's still a bit of water in it. So, but I, I, I'm handling these these trees with that little tractor with very little effort. Some of them I can't get them up too, too high, but, uh, oh, there, I put this on. Talk to them when I should have been listening. Um, it, it, it's been great. So what I've been doing is setting my trees down on a couple of skids basically behind us there. And, uh, holding them up with the with the grapple so I can cut them so they've been uh, or it's been really really effective in in this year's firewood processing because usually everything is on the ground and you can only do so much on the ground and your back by the end of the day is sore this it's always held up at waist height and I'll show you here So what I do is I mark it, I have a little stick there that's 16 inches long and give her all a mark and then I uh, go to town and snip away. So yeah that uh, little machine is handy. I've already cut I think uh, three three pieces off the end of this on one end and three off the other oh, yes one two three four four off this end so it'll be five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four five twenty six Plus, I probably cut five off. So 30, 30 pieces in this tree alone. And yeah, it gives a good heat. I really like the ironwood. Um, it does burn hot, but it does hold a coal like an oak does too. But uh, it, it's my definitely favorite favorite wood to burn in the winter here. It uh, stays all night and, and gives a good heat. Uh, I like that if we have to, you know, take maple, but like oak is really good, but maple is a really good wood to burn too. Uh, the beech around here have been dying off. They've got, a lot of them have the beech bark disease. So if, if you don't have them before they basically fall over, there's not a whole pile left in them once they're on the ground. They don't, they don't hold up very good after in the furnace, so to speak. So if you can get them good green standing, it's not too bad, but, uh, after they fell over for a little while, there, there's not a whole pile left in them. So anyway, we're going to go back over. Forgive me for the shakiness here. I'm using my uh, phone as a camera and a little bit of a prop up here. We don't have any bipods or tripods. i just a plain Jane type of guy. So we're going to go back over there and see if we can fire up that saw and cut the rest of that one up.
the end of my piece yet, there's a paint mark, and with this HLA 60 inch grapple, it actually measures to the back about 63 inches. So what that leaves me with is three saw cuts, because I've got four blocks left, I've got four blocks left exactly uh, in my grapple, so when I pick up my piece, I try and line up my lines on each end of my grapple, and uh, it works out well. You've got to be pretty careful here because it's very close, but you know, the piece is 64 inches wide. I got a half an inch on this side to cut, and I got a half an inch on this side to cut, so it works out really well for my uh, 16 inch block. So it does. So now I'm going to set that piece aside and I've got two more left to do up here. I'm going to wrap up this landing. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.